multi-layer diffraction grading uh, demonstration with uh, with numerical. So uh, as we saw uh, last time, basically uh, metal layer multi-layer diffraction gratings are just uh, uh, an alternative to metal lenses for performing imaging with flat optics. But they do perform uh, uh, provide certain advantages, particular in terms of fabrication. So, so for example, to achieve a similar performance, multi-layer diffraction gratings would actually have uh, much bigger features, making them easier to fabricate. Um, so here we have just seen uh, how they look like, for example, and so this is like a standard refractive lens with um, uh, just a spherical lens. And if you wanted to sort of increase the numerical aperture or the bending of light, you would have to go to thicker and thicker lenses. But then you can use the principle of diffraction. You keep the thic thickness fixed and use uh, a different pitch, for example, to achieve different uh, values of the bending of light or the numerical aperture. Then the next one is the binary diffractive lens, which basically is, is essentially the same as this one where you have just two values of uh, height. Uh, and then we have the multi-layer diffractive uh, gratings of the lens. Uh, where you have different values of, of your height and uh, this is this is the metal lens essentially which uh, has a, which needs actually much much uh, smaller features to achieve a comparable performance um, this table basically summarizes uh, the performance uh, and the feature sizes needed for multi-layer diffractive lens and a metal lens to achieve uh, similar performances uh, so here we provide the frequency range. So this is for a single frequency or a very narrow region around the frequency. Well, this is a broadband um, region, which you can see here. It's uh, several hundred nanometers or several hundred or several microns. Um, and you can see that for the multi-layer diffractive lens, uh, the feature sizes are much bigger. Like the height and the widths, for example, are much bigger than the metal lens. And you achieve, in this case, better better performance and especially you can see in the case of broadband is significantly better performance uh, last time we had also seen the, uh, an algorithm which could be used to uh, design such a grading so you start essentially with a with the initial solution and then you perform an iteration you perform you, you take one groove you you apply a positive perturbation then you measure a quantity called as uh, the fom or the figure of merit uh, which basically just ma looks at the the performance of uh, of the beam which is uh, which is being produced after the after it travel uh, travels through the the grating, and then it iteratively looks at uh, how the FOM score is being improved. So if, if it's if it's not improving with the positive per perturbation, you apply a negative one, and uh, and then if it does not change, then you discard that particular perturbation and you go to the next group and so on. So uh, yeah, basically, for example, this is this is one particular example for the for the multi-layer diffraction grating where you have this wavelength of interest which is fairly broadband. Uh, although we would we look at the performance at only these three value of, of the wavelengths, you want the focal length to be 10 mm, number of grooves to 80, uh, groove width of 3 micron, and then material is a photoresist polymer which is uh, which will have a particular refractive index. Um, and then the design steps which we had used was you essentially specify your desired optical response like the focal length, wavelengths, uh, numerical aperture, etc. Then using the DBS algorithm you can obtain your height profile. Uh, then you can import this height profile in numerical FDTD and perform FDTD simulations to obtain the near field data. Uh, and then you can use numer numerical far field functions and obtain actually uh, far field profile so you can actually test how well the grating is uh, performing using uh, FDTD and far fields at long distances so then uh, we had gone through the the scripts briefly uh, which which are used uh, to actually uh, load your data for example and then you can store the near field data you have this near field monitor uh, yeah you basically just uh, run your script and this this 
uh, data can be saved in any particular format. You can choose the fields and, and the coordinates. And once you have that, you can again read that data and convert it into file field and you can generate file field uh, every TD uh, results, file field projections using uh, file field exact 2D function uh, provided by Lumerical. And this was how it looked like, like you, uh, so basically we wanted uh, the focus, the beam to be focused at uh, 10 mm from, from the source for particular wavelengths like 460, 540 and 620 and that's what we can see for example for 460 you see a uh, focused spot at 10 mm and the same with 540 and for 620 and this focusing is uh, absent for the other wavelengths for what for which the grating was not designed so which is 500 and 580 nanometers. Uh, now I'll just show you, uh, so, so in principle, uh, the, this, all this procedure, entire procedure, including the Python script for optimization, uh, the, the DBS algorithm can actually be uh, done on numerical, which provides uh, support for Python coding. So this is essentially uh, the, the script for uh, uh, the, the algorithm, the optimization algorithm, which is uh, looking at the figure of merit and uh, then performing optimization. So this is the, uh, the FOM calculation and this is the function which performs that. As you can see, you can uh, work in the numerical script uh, file editor just like you're working in uh, on some uh, any uh, Python platform and you can import all the functions and like for example uh, all the the libraries and uh, you can perform all the optimization here you provide all the parameters and then you can write it in, in desired any desired format so you can write it in for example json format or in the text file format depends so in this case at least uh, yeah we are writing it in the text format like we wanted to look at the height profile for example and uh, yeah I mean you can just it will just start running and it uh, goes through these multiple iterations and basically this is how it how it looks like so you just run that uh, perform 10, 10 iterations and yeah, it just prints the time taken and it uh, provides the uh, the height profile of your uh, multi-layer diffraction grating which can then be uh, imported into your a numerical file using this, this, this structure script uh, and then you can perform the further analysis as, as I explained before. Uh, one other nice feature which uh, numerical provides is you can actually uh, write all the data uh, including for example the anal uh, the far the far uh, obtained far field profile the wavelengths uh, the structural parameters and it can be written and exported into uh, a JSON file. So this is what is done by this particular script. Uh, so, so essentially I'm just loading in my, my structural parameters first and then uh, the final analyzed data which is the far field profile and uh, yeah you just have to give them some names um, and then you can actually uh, yeah, here you are actually writing the um, all the data you want into a JSON file. So uh, the JSON file can be uh, is something like this. Um, so you can see here, for example, it writes writes all the so this is the height profile of your structure and if you go down below you can get for example uh, the refractive index file uh, and the wavelengths and, and all the other field profiles etc so this is this is very useful because this this can for example here you can you can see all the wavelengths again. Uh, so this is uh, very useful because then this can directly be uh, loaded into uh, 
Zmatch, for example, where you want to uh, load a particular or design a particular uh, uh, source with certain features, um, both geometric features and spectral features. And then you can perform beam propagation in, in Zmax and uh, perform further analysis. So that is a, a so this, this basically provides a very uh, handy tool um, to perform seamless integration between numerical and Zmax. And all of this, uh, all platform support, uh, all pla uh, Python analysis can be done uh, very easily on uh, on uh, on numerical itself. So, hope you like this video and please do uh, try out Python script in in, in numerical and uh, hope you learn something nice from this. Thank you.